The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and welcome to St. Bartholomew's on this Sunday of Epiphany and Happy New Year to everyone. Epiphany is the 12th day of Christmas. Today we celebrated three days earlier on the Sunday nearest and the word itself means revelation. And today we celebrate the revelation of Jesus being discovered by the wise men, the Magi, who have come and the epiphany or revelation is that they see that Jesus is not just for his own people, but is for everyone. We're going to explore the celebration or the feast of the epiphany using T.S. Eliot's poem, Journey of the Magi. And this year we have our very own Jim Bradford doing a wonderful reading of that poem for us. If you have a copy or find one on the internet, it's worth doing. Please join us in our opening hymn. Consider what their coming means. Let us pray. Eternal God, who by a star led wise men to the worship of your Son, guide by your light the nations of the earth, that the whole world may know your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We listen to an Old Testament reading read by Nancy Milson, where a kind of foretelling of this event seems to be suggested. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. 
Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels, camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. In the time of Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of Christ. I speak in the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. On this Epiphany Sunday, we bring Christmas to a close, or at least the 12th day of Christmas is January 6th. We celebrate today the closest Sunday to that. And it really does take 12 days or a lifetime to plumb the depths of what Christmas means. It's got all its familiar and family-like meanings. We all understand that. And what does it mean that God came into the world as an infant in the manger? And Joseph and Mary had to grapple with what that meant. And then sometime later, we're not sure how long, but they're still there in Bethlehem, the wise men, the magi, came, drawn from some kind of intuition from far away. And of course, those wise men represent all of us, the Gentiles. Jesus appeared to Joseph and Mary as an infant and appears now to the Gentiles as king as well, as God's son and king. And this is the epiphany which marks the beginning of this epiphany season, the revelation of God in the world for everyone. Trying to understand what it means, I think, needs 
the help of artists, people who plumb the depths of these things, which really are hard to rationally speak of. And so this year, as we've done in the past, we'll listen to T.S. Eliot's poem, The Journey of the Magi. Eliot, an American who moved to Britain, became a British citizen, and was essentially a Buddhist, at least. He studied that. But by the age of 40, he had become a Christian. And he was in the habit of writing Christmas cards each year with a poem in it. And in 1927, he wrote this poem to all his friends, The Journey of the Magi. And he was moved to write it because he'd been working on, a, on an essay about the English divine, Lancelot Andrews, who lived about 1600. Andrews was one of the most famous preachers of his day. And he was working, Eliot was working on Andrews' sermons. And he came across these words about the Epiphany story. It was no summer progress, a cold coming they had of it at this time of the year, just the worst time of the year to take a journey, and especially a long journey. The ways deep, the weather sharp, the days short, the sun farthest off, the very dead of winter. And many of you will recognize some of those phrases from the Journey of the Magi poem. It's been said that all poets imitate, and Eliot made a joke that great poets plagiarize. So he was aware that he had taken these and he wasn't trying to hide it. He simply incorporated it into his poem. So before we listen to the poem, we should just notice that it has three parts. The first part are the difficulties faced on the journey and the doubts that the Magi, the wise men, had about the folly of taking this long journey. And then we move to daylight from darkness. We're moving down into a valley, and vegetation is around, and keep an ear to how our reader, Jim, emphasizes this as we go into this vegetated valley. Then the third part is a recollection of one of the wise men in old age. And of course, we, listening to it as a poem, take it as a recollection of Eliot as he looks back on his life. In the poem, there are a number of images that are worth, uh, worth talking about first. When they come down into the valley. There's a running stream and a watermill beating the darkness. Now this running stream uh, emphasizes Jesus, the living water, and the watermill beating the darkness. This year that's the phrase that most impacted me. Think about it, a watermill, the water of eternal life, beating the darkness. As a mill beats the water and energy is created, the darkness is beaten. That's just one of the kinds of images that Eliot uses. There are three trees seen on the horizon, and of course, we're meant to think of the three crosses at Calvary. They came to a tavern with vine leaves over the lintel, and the vine leaves over the lintel are a, are a reference to the blood of the Passover lamb that was sprinkled on the door lintels so that God would pass over and allow Moses to lead his people into freedom and the promised land. And of course, Jesus now leads us into a different kind of promised land. There is new wine. Jesus represents new wine, but on the ground there are old wineskins. The new wine cannot go into the old wineskin. It has to go into new ones. Presumably, it has to go into us. Six hands at an open door, dicing for pieces of silver, reminiscent of the soldiers at the cross who are 
dividing lots or through casting lots to take Jesus' clothing and a reference to the silver of betrayal of Judas. And then the wise men say, and arriving at evening, not a moment too soon, finding the place, it was, you might say, satisfactory. So this place, of course, is the manger where the Christ child was. And satisfactory is a, a word that has changed its meaning, but we get closest to it in our Eucharistic prayer from the Book of Common Prayer when it says Jesus gave his life as a satisfaction for the sins of the world. It's a way of saying somehow they are recognizing in this Christ child, God, and what God and Jesus did for us in this forgiveness of sins. And the last scene, of course, thinking about old age and thinking about life and death. Let's listen to The Journey of the Magi by T.S. Eliot, read by Jim Bradford. A cold coming we had of it. Just the worst time of the year for a journey, and such a long journey. The ways deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. And the camels galled, sore-footed, refractory, lying down in the melting snow. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces and the silken girls bringing the sherbet. Then the camel men, cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their liquor and women, and the night fires going out and the lack of shelters and the cities hostile and the towns unfriendly and the villages dirty and charging high prices. A hard time we had of it. At the end, we preferred to travel at night, sleeping in snatches with the voices singing in our ears, saying that this was all folly. Then, at dawn, we came down to a temperate valley, wet, below the snow line, smelling of vegetation, with a running stream and a water mill beating the darkness, and three trees on the low sky, and an old white horse galloped away in the meadow. Then we came to a tavern with vine leaves over the lintel, Six hands at an open door, dicing for pieces of silver, and feet kicking the empty wineskins. But there was no information, and so we continued, and arriving at evening, not a moment too soon, finding the place, it was, you might say, satisfactory. All this was a long time ago, I remember, and I would do it again. But set down, this set down, this. Were we led all that way for birth or death? There was a birth, certainly. We had evidence and no doubt. I had seen birth and death, but I thought they were different. This birth was hard and bitter agony for us, like death, our death. We return to our places, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here in the old dispensation with an alien people clutching their gods. I should be glad of another death. Eliot, in one of his other poems, talked about endings and beginnings. What we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. The journey was hard and bitter. They saw many deaths along the road. Satisfaction, they hoped, may come. Having seen the Christ, everything has changed. We await and are always awaiting another death. Rowan Williams, former Archbishop of Canterbury, wrote about this poem. 
Jesus birth as the poet Eliot starts rediscovering Christian faith changes everything birth or death a new start that is felt only as the death of all that has been familiar and yet the old world goes on galloping aimlessly like the old white horse well we are at epiphany for the year of our Lord 2021 what does it mean for us what must we ask of ourselves what gifts will we bring in this fraught new year what goal how much of our treasure can we use for the world beyond ourselves and our family how much of our time and talent can we give to helping others what frankincense well the frankincense is incense and biblically incense was burned at holy times and the smoke rising from the incense was meant to be prayers which ascended to heaven so what in our spiritual life what in our prayer life can we do in this new year a question to ask ourselves and myrrh what myrrh the embalming ointment for the dead put in a contemporary way we might say how can we live our lives knowing that we all will die and yet not despairing how can we live the days of our life with the joy that Jesus has brought into the world? And of course, we do that by our faith that Jesus, the one who did die, rose again in the power of the resurrection. And that resurrection will happen after we have died, certainly, but is going on all the time in our lives. As Endings come and new beginnings happen. Something like the way Eliot spoke. Well, I want to end with two things. A short meditation on Epiphany by one of our greatest 20th century theologians, Karl Rahner. And when that um, is over, you'll hear some music beginning and we're going to listen to a beautiful song composed by a friend of mine, the Reverend Brian Rattan, about epiphany, other ways of imagining this mysterious and yet wonderful event. A new year has begun. During this year, too, all the paths from east to west from morning until evening, lead on and on as far as the eye can see, through the deserts of life, with all its changes. But these paths can be turned into the blessed pilgrimage to the absolute, the journey to God. Set out, my heart, take up the journey. The star shines. You can't take much with you on the journey, and yet you will lose much on the way. Let it go. God of love, incense of yearning, myrrh of suffering. These you certainly have with you. He shall accept them, and we shall find him.
Today I ask your prayers for the Anglican Communion and especially for the Anglican province of Alexandra in Egypt. In our diocese for the Church of the Epiphany in Gloucester and their interim priest in charge, Alana. In our companion diocese of Jerusalem in the Middle East, we pray for the clergy and people of St. Peter's Church, Berzeit in the West Bank in the world for peace and justice in the Middle East, Ethiopia, Sudan, and a peaceful transition of power in our neighbors to the south. Prayers for those on the front lines of our COVID response, including the vaccination effort, our Canadian forces, and members of the Governor General's foot guards, those in diplomatic missions and NGOs, for our schools, for long-term care facilities, especially the Gary Armstrong home. And today, at the end of each petition, I will sing God of Love, and you answer, hear our prayer. God of Love Living God, expire our minds with a vision of your kingdom in this time and place. Touch our eyes that we may see your glory in all creation. Touch our ears that we may hear from every mouth the hunger for hope and stories of refreshment. our hearts that we may discern the mission to which you call us. Touch our feet that we may take your good news into our neighborhoods, communities, and all the world. suffering and raise up all who have fallen, especially all who have experienced loss of any kind in these pandemic days. At St. Bartholomew's we pray for Andre, Alberto, Busy, Colt, Elizabeth, Sue, Margaret, Lori, Harriet, Marissa, Mary, Don, Christina, Hannah and her family, Harriet and her family in Africa, Michael, Kathleen, and Martha. And at St. Aidan's we pray for Janet, Iris, Jim, Jim and Rosemary, Tracy, Neil, Margaret, Sierra. Be with all those in our hearts this day. Let us take a moment to remember those known to us.
die and let light perpetual shine upon them. of the Magi, and give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you, the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as Jesus has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Please join us in our last hymn. today are given in celebration on January 3rd of Martine's three-quarter of a century birthday by her husband and family. We take a moment to recognize and give thanks for the gifts that you bring here at St. Bartholomew's and St. Aidan's to support our church in the work that we do. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Thank you for joining us on this Epiphany morning. As you know, there will be no in-person services until at least January 24th. So. The way we will worship together will be via our video link. And thank you for worshiping with us today and for being with us in the past. We are in a new year. It's a new time. It is fraught. We all know that. But let us go forward in hope. I want to thank Jim Bradford for his marvelous reading today. 
Marie Kier for the lovely painting that began. Hope you can join us uh, for the coffee hour. And a thank you to everyone, those from St. Bartholomew's, those from St. Aidan's, and those who are viewing us everywhere. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and all those whom you love now and always. Go into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind may blow, herbs that hard as water like a snow, snow had fallen, snow on the snow, snow on the snow. In the bleak mid I can I give it? 